Hi, I'm Ellie Gabriel, and I'm a senior at Yale studying biomedical engineering. Today I'm here to tell you about the WannaCry ransomware attack that occurred in May 2017, which in only a few hours had far-reaching effects across the globe. But today we're going to focus on the cybersecurity effects of the WannaCry virus on the UK National Health Service. So what exactly is ransomware? Ransomware is a type of malicious cyber attack where attackers, attackers encrypt an organization's data and demand payment to restore access. Attackers may also steal the organization's information and demand payment in return for not disclosing the info to the public, essentially blackmail. Here we have a clip from BBC News on May 12, 2017, the day of the, of the WannaCry ransomware attack detailing the events. It looked at first like an attack just on hospitals in the UK, but it's now becoming clear that this malicious software has run riot around the world. Russia, the United States and many points in between have been hit by what's now a common form of cybercrime. Ransomware has become a tool of choice for an awful lot of criminals simply because it's very, very easy to make money very quickly. You can buy ransomware online for as little as $39. So how does ransomware work? Well, it often arrives in the form of a link in an innocuous-looking email. When you click on that link, the malicious software is downloaded and spreads rapidly through your network, locking up all the files on it. Then a message flashes up on screens warning that if you want your data unlocked, you'll have to pay a ransom, often in Bitcoin, the virtual currency. The irony is that security experts think a hacking tool allegedly leaked from America's National Security Agency in April may have been used by the attackers. Microsoft warned about the threat this vulnerability posed, but said anyone who'd installed a security update to Windows software the previous month would be OK. The health service will point out that it's just one of many organisations around the world affected by this attack, but it now faces what could be a lengthy process of cleaning up its computers and making the network safe again. Rory Catton-Jones, BBC News. So what exactly happened on May 12th? Well, on the morning of Friday, May 12th, the WannaCry virus attack began. Within the day, 230,000 computers in 150 countries were infected with the virus. The virus targeted computers that were running the Microsoft Windows operating system by encrypting the data on the computer and then demanding ransom payment in the form of Bitcoin. How was this attack stopped? Well, fortunately, it was discovered that the virus propagates to other computers by communicating with an external server. A cybersecurity expert registered a domain using the same name as the domain that the virus was searching for. But when the virus reached this new domain, it was halted and not allowed to propagate or infect any more computers. One might call this design a honeypot server. This is a screenshot of what the virus looked like when it came upon someone's computer. We see that there are demands for Bitcoin within the time frame of three days. This ransom amount would go up if that money was not sent in after three days, but after seven, all of the data would be supposedly lost. As I mentioned before, we're going to focus on the direct effects of the WannaCry virus attack on the national health system. So in the UK, more than 1,000 IT systems and devices were infected and there was full or partial shutdown of 71 hospitals. This resulted in the cancellation of 19,000 appointments and an estimated financial impact of $92 million. Additionally, 20 of the 25 infected acute trusts managed to continue treating urgent and emergency patients throughout the weekend, but five of them had to divert patients to other departments or required outside help to continue treating patients. When the NHS conducted their investigation of the attack, interestingly, they found that all of the computers infected by the WannaCry virus shared the same vulnerability. And this vulnerability is one that could have been prevented. They could have prevented this vulnerability by patching up their software or by tightening up their firewalls. Ultimately, this event taught the NHS how important it is to ensure that their organizations are taking cybersecurity threats seriously and how important it would be to have a response plan of action set in place for what the NHS should do in the case of a cyber attack. Additionally, the NHS learned how important it is to ensure that their organizations are actually implementing the software updates, such as the one that came out in March that could have prevented this attack in May.
And lastly, they realized how important essential communication is during an incident like the WannaCry attack. Microsoft announced their response to the event on May 12, 2017 by saying, Today, many of our customers around the world were victims of malicious WannaCrypt software. Additionally, we are taking the highly unusual step of providing security update for all customers to protect their Windows platforms, even if they were no longer supported. Additionally, in March, we release a security update which addresses the vulnerability that these attacks are exploiting. This event was a wake-up call to the seriousness of cybersecurity problems, especially when it comes to the medical field. WannaCry was only one of two cybersecurity attacks that occurred in 2017 that could have been prevented through relatively simple means. Multi-billions of dollars were lost across the globe on May 12, 2017, but it could have been much worse if it wasn't stopped within the day. When we think about the risks of medical software, we typically think of software and devices that directly interact with the patient, such as ones that diagnose and treat them. But cybersecurity risks are also very real. One difference between cybersecurity risks in medical software and the other software that we think of is that in cybersecurity, there's responsibility belonging to the manufacturer of the software to maintain update, to create updates, and also responsibility on the part of the organization to actually implement these updates. Whereas when it comes to medical software like the Thorac 25 device, the responsibility falls mostly on the manufacturer to make sure that the device is safe for patient use. If you're interested in learning more about the WannaCry ransomware attack, please take a look at the previous slides. In the footnotes, we have listed references to external reading. Thank you.